Hey everyone, what's going on? This is Zola and today we're going to be having a look at selections once again and hopefully what will be the final lesson. Um, you've probably been wondering why I've been doing like little bits and pieces here and there and why I've split things up but hopefully today should be one of the first lessons where if you've watched all the other tutorials I've done in the series so far we're going to combine a few of these to do something um, really cool and uh, one of the most important things in Photoshop I think. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you if you thought that I've been kind of clueless and scattergun with my approach up until now, hopefully some of this would start to come together and make more sense. So here is a photo I shot in Marrakesh when I was there last month. And as you can see, it was a really like stormy, like overcast day. And uh, oh wait, no, it wasn't because what I've done is replaced the sky, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so actually, it was shot on a really nice day. But um, this is what I've done. I've replaced the sky with like a, a cloudy sky. And then if we threw a black and white filter on, you could easily be fooled into thinking. If we go into like some of the details here, you could easily be fooled into thinking, um, you know, like it was a stormy day. I've done this actually in about five minutes just to show. Obviously, there's some bits that work perfectly, like this palm tree here. Like literally, we are at 100% here and it's impossible to tell that this is a different sky. There are other parts which kind of have slight fringing, but I'll explain that in a second. But uh, yeah, hopefully this is going to be a lot of fun. This part is probably the worst and I'll explain why. But like other parts, look, like we've kept the details up to 100% of these tiny little birds which are on the roof. And this all here is immaculate. So um, hopefully, yeah, this should be quite a fun one. And uh, combining, like I said, some of the lessons we've done so far um, to to kind of produce this, which is one of the first tools. You can apply this technique to hair and all the rest of it. So I'm gonna stop babbling and we're gonna get started. So um, the way I've done this is, what we can see here is uh, the sky versus the foreground has really clear contrast. And again, I'm gonna go to 100%, which uh, I'm just pressing Control and Plus to go into 100%. And as you can see, this video, is uh, this photo is not the sharpest and there's a bit of noise and everything. Um, so we've actually done quite well. You could go into the photo and like try and sharpen it a bit before we start. Um, so go to sharpen and like add um, smart sharpen maybe. And uh, just kind of ever so slightly sharpen it to kind of make this a bit easier. But I'm not going to do that with this one. Uh, as you can see these are the birds I was pointing out earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the information in the contrast to actually create a mask. So um, what we're going to do is go to the channels and the channels are here for me next to my layers. If you don't have them, go up to windows and find channels. Um, and what we can see, so at the moment what we're seeing is the RGB image, which is the image combined with the red, the green and the blue channel. Now, if you click control three, four and five, you can switch to these individually. I'm just going to tap on the thumbnails with my, um, I use a, a Wacom tablet, but you know, if you've got a mouse, just left click. Uh, if you click on the top one, you'll get all three combined, which is your color image. If you click red, you'll see, I'm going to, again, I'm going to zoom in here to see. And what we're looking for is the channel with the most contrast. So like where is the best starting point? Now, as you can see, I've done this already, but um, I found that the red was kind of washed out, the green a bit better, but the blue is where we saw like the better contrast between uh, the black and the white, which is what we're going to use to essentially create our mask. Because if you remember, a mask is essentially black and white information where white will be uh, transparent. So it will keep your um, whatever uh, the mask is in white is going to stay in your picture. And then whatever we paint black is going to disappear. And then anywhere with gray in between is going to be kind of like semi transparent. So um, what I'm going to do here is select the blue channel and I'm going to drag it down to this little um, sheet icon down here and that's done nothing which is really useful um, oh, it's giving just give it a second to think there and it's there we go sorry it was just a bit of a freeze there so um, okay so we have our blue channel now and as you can see this is just created a replica if I click on these two uh, they look exactly the same and what we've essentially created is a new channel for our but a channel that we can then go and mess around with. So what I'm going to do is go to image, adjustments, and then do levels. Uh, you can do this with like uh, control L as well, but I'm just going to do this for the sake of, and what I'm going to do is um, drag the 
dark point up here and what I'm essentially doing is bringing all the darks towards black um, so I, I, th I think I went like somewhere around 35 and then uh, I think it was like maybe 175 was was somewhere like where I brought the white point up and if we come in like really close again we'll start to see that um, you know we're, we're kind of we don't want to lose the detail this is the thing if you come too far you're gonna lose all I, if we just take a look at this area in particular we're gonna start losing some of the detail there if we come too far so the the ideal ideally you want to come to about way and if you have a look at the histogram it's usually like as you start going past the histogram you're gonna start losing so I think about there is correct and what you can do is move the middle point slightly towards the right and uh, what that will do is bring some of your greys towards a darker color and again you don't want to lose too much detail uh, but this looks actually like a pretty good starting point um, it looks like we're not going to lose too much of the detail so I'm going to hit OK so what we have now is essentially like a black and white map now this is good but it's not perfect if you look here hopefully this is coming through in the video but um, we've got like greys and um, which means you know like it's going to keep information here which we don't want um, everything down here is fine but obviously because of the technique we're using if you look at the highlights of these branches we're getting some really bright spots and so Photoshop is unable to decipher that you know we're not going to want to keep those these are just highlights and if I keep pressing like um, between control 2 and control 7 as you can see here these are my two channels so control 2 and what I'm going to do is keep switching back between these and have a look so if we look down here at the car you know we, we're not going to want to keep that um, and so and so what I'm gonna do is um, again like I was saying combining some of the techniques this is why I've been so pedantic in teaching you like all the tools I'm gonna use a selection tool and just make a selection on my new channel and I'm gonna hit because I have black selected here I'm gonna hit alt and backspace and uh, for some reason that's filling it with the opposite so uh, yeah um, alternatively I can just make a selection hit shift backspace and that's going to um, just create uh, a kind of fill. I can't fill this in with anything other than black because we're, we're, we're working in the channel right now. But essentially, I want to get rid of everything. You know, only thing I want the contrast to be is between the skyline and, um, and you know, what's going on down here. So, uh, you know, again, this fountain is going to be really, really tricky to get rid of if, um, if I don't do this in a custom manner. Uh, these roof highlights are probably going to be a pain in the neck so I'm going to get rid of those and yeah you know we've got some little ones here uh, deselect that press control 2 and as you can see we've got specs here that have a tree behind them so we're not going to want to keep those either so uh, let's just again and then we've got all these branches up here so um, what I'm going to do is select all this here like so and I think we're going to want to keep that so I'm going to you know uh, if I press control 2 yeah as you can see that's sky so we do want to keep that so I'm not going to go and mess around in there too much uh, here not so much these are highlights so um, it's taking a bit of time but honestly like compared to doing this with a magic one tool you would be here for months so um, okay so that's a good starting point what we can do now is hit control L again and this will give us a second shot uh, you know I could even duplicate this so if I hit uh, bring that down to here just in case I do, you know like I don't want to lose all my good work um, so I'm gonna hit control L again and what we're gonna do is try and knock out the greys in the sky here so there we go we've lost that but again we want to keep our eye like on the on the highlights here and make sure we're not losing anything so as you can see like the histogram is quite useful so it's about there that we're going to lose all the sky detail and then if we bring this in ever so slightly uh, this looks like a good starting point so I'm going to hit OK now as you can see we've got areas here that need some more love than others so what I'm going to do is using my lasso tool I'm going to make a little selection here and when I hit Control L this time it's going to allow us to just like work on this area individually which again I've like I've, this is why I've been preaching about why selections are so important so as you can see we're keeping the birds in there and uh, the roof here like if we pulled this too far 
Uh, we're going to start to lose things like the windows there. So again, we might have to do this in like two passes. So I, I'm kind of happy with that. And we've got a, a kind of like pole slash tower here. So I'm going to hit Control L and um, just bring that up. Yeah, it looks all right. Okay, cool. Uh, this area is going to be really tricky. So um, I'm going to kind of say that's all right. Uh, everything over here looks good, you know. Um, maybe work on these here trees. So hit Control L, and um, again, just bring the the mid black point up. And the more time you take here, the less time you're gonna have to spend painting. So you know, I really recommend this rim is not really gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is select my paint tool. I'm gonna select a black color. Uh, could not because no layers are selected. That's interesting. Huh. This is. Uh, that's strange. Anyway, um, layer had deselected itself. But uh, what I'm going to do is just do this with the uh, with the lasso tool because we want to get rid of the highlight that's on that sign there. So uh, again, just using alt and backspace to just fill these areas in. And you know, I think this is all right. Maybe this tree could use a little love. So um, again, we're gonna lose some of like the detail here, but the goal is to lose as little as possible. Uh, this we might do in a separate pass. And this, I'm just ever so slightly gonna bump like the midtones up here to like black. Hit OK, and I'm going to press deselect. And to me, that looks like a pretty good selection. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to invert it with Control I, because we want to keep everything that's white. Okay. I mean, you can do this now. You can just select it. It's not important. And then what I'm going to do is Control click on the thumbnail here to create a selection. Now, if I um, click on the RGB, so we get our information back, and then we've got our layer selected there, and I'm going to hit mask. And as you can see, we've created a mask, and uh, this is like a pretty good start, I'd say. Um, now we're getting a bit of fringing, which we're gonna deal with in a second. But uh, my first part of call would be to just see that, you know, like there is a tiny bit of fringe, but I'll show you how to remove that in a second. I'm gonna select the thumbnail here, hit Control Alt R, which is gonna get our kind of like refined mask. And we're just gonna pull the edge in ever so slightly. Uh, you can, you can, you know play with the contrasts you know like again different areas will you know this is kind of a catch-all tool so like you don't want to go too hard so maybe add a tiny bit of feather like 0.5 of a pixel but the goal here is not to make like too many wholesale changes and again that looks pretty good um, now we've still got like a bit of a frame here so um, what we can do is select our mask there do that hit control L and just kind of like bring it down ever so slightly, maybe like bring bring the um, bring the blacks up. And uh, again, make sure you have your mask selected there. Uh, we've got a few problem areas up here. Uh, just kind of like tweaking it ever so slightly. Uh, and of course, now the the advantage to doing this now is you have it on the top of the background, which so you can kind of like see. Uh, your final result and what I might do when I just to have a look is I'm going to duplicate the layer so I hit it and control J and uh, what I'm going to do is right click on the mask and I'm going to apply the layer mask which is going to bake all that transparency info into the picture which allows me to then go to image layer sorry layer matting and there's a useful process here called defringe and I'm going to try one pixel first and as you can see that's going to remove that little fringe that we had on and so suddenly like everything, like even up to, you know, like there wasn't that much detail here to begin with, but as you can see, we've even kept the branches, the um, the kind of sky looks like that looks amazing. Um, this looks perfect. You know, like we've kept even the tiny information with those birds and even something as fine as the branches. And like I said, this picture wasn't super sharp. So this is actually an amazing result, you know, that we've got in like 10 minutes and then after that, you can apply your color balance, and uh, you know, there, there you go, job done. Like I, I might be inclined to um, select my, my kind of um, 
my image here move these filters to the top and uh, maybe like add a uh, curves like uh, curves this is just to finish off now I'm gonna bring this up here and you know kind of like darken it and uh, just bring this down make it look gloomy so like there wouldn't be too much brightness in the highlights like these highlights are still kind of lying because it was a really sunny day so what I'm gonna do is like just take the brightness out of these highlights and as you can see I'm doing it for the whole image because there's some kind of bright spots in the clouds as well so um, that's okay and then what I might do is actually go into the image here hit control L and uh, maybe like just bring down some of the brightness in the highlights there like make it a bit duller and gloomier just so this this pavement doesn't kind of like pop as much and then you know add a black and white filter and maybe I will just like bring the colors down but there you go like um, you know add a bit of blue to that and uh, there you go it looks like a kind of cloudy overcast day so um, Hopefully you've kind of learned something and I think that covers the basics of Photoshop. We can get into like some of the more fun features in the next lessons and doing things creatively and um, sorry it's been a bit slow up until now but hopefully you've seen in this lesson a lot of the kind of basic theory that I've taught you come together to create something like quite impressive which would you know have been literally impossible using the um, the tool, the uh, sorry the magic one tool or the selection tool or the lasso tool. So uh, if you enjoyed this lesson, please leave a like or a comment and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching as always. Goodbye.